Hey guys, this is Bits. Welcome to another Mentoring Monday. Recently, my workaholic work ethic has gotten me into several situations that has caused me a lot of stress. It's forced me to take a very hard look at what is fun and enjoyable and what's causing me stress. There are many areas in the music industry that can cause a great deal of stress. It's easy to get sucked into it in order to grow as an artist. I'm actually working on finishing an album, so there's lots of moving parts and opportunities to overcommit myself. But is it worth it? Let's dive in a little deeper into a new line of questioning. Have you found yourself in too many stressful situations recently? Or in the past? Have you overcommitted yourself in the workplace, with family, or obligations to friends? A very common situation is children were taught to be polite and forthcoming. And maybe you're the ultimate people pleaser. Imposter syndrome makes it difficult for us to say no. The net result of it all is we get stressed and find ourselves overcommitted because of our inability to say no. Maybe you're afraid to speak up because you might hurt someone's feelings and you end up carrying the burden inside of you instead. Not a good situation. Today's topic is an important one. Learn to say no. Or even better, learn to say no without feeling guilty. When our plate is too full, we don't spend enough time on the things we love to do, the things that bring us joy and happiness. So how do we make changes in our life to better focus on lowering stress and increasing joy. Learn to say no without feeling guilty. Here's some tips. Be clear and concise. Make sure you choose your words carefully. State your refusal directly and clearly without excessive explanation and justification. If you explain too much, it gives the other person ammunition to pick holes in your reasoning. For example, I'm sorry, I don't have enough time because my plate is very full at the moment, but I appreciate you asking. Number two, be honest. Always be honest. Lies are often defended with new lies and more lies. Do we know any pathological liars? Nobody wants a liar in their lives. So be direct and honest so that others will respect our decisions. Know yourself. You have to know yourself. I always say, if you don't go within, you'll go without. Know what is important to you and when to say no. I've learned to use these four steps when trying to decide if I want to do something. Will it bring me enjoyment? Does it align with my values? Does it align with my goals? And would I be doing this to make everyone else happy at my expense? Four big questions that really help. Set boundaries. Learn to say no in an assertive but respectful manner. Be gracious. Very important. Thank the person for thinking of you and remain kind. For example, thank you so much for thinking of me. I'm honored. I'd really love to help you, but I just don't have any time on my schedule to do this right now. If you get used to saying this, then you'll respect other people for doing the same. There's a music producer that I work with from time to time. He's told me no on several different project ideas in the past. I actually respect how he's figured out what's important to him, what he has time to work on, and how easy it is for him to say no to me. Now that I know it's important to him, my future ideas are much more in line with what's important to both of us. Understand that you could feel guilty. We're human. It happens. We have feelings. But it's much better to feel awkward for a few moments than to regret your decision and have to change your mind later. It's much more difficult then and much more difficult to carry the longer term stress from saying yes to something you don't have time for or don't want to do. This is sort of like the slow pain or the fast pain. 
Slow pain lasts far longer than fast pain. Take care of yourself. Sometimes if we say no, it's because our own needs are not being met by the requests that we face every day. When we are sick or tired, it's hard to do much of anything. I've had a couple recent situations that were weighing hard on me this past week. In addition to that, my wife and I recently witnessed a terrible tragedy in our neighborhood. The stress of not dealing with issues that were wearing me down, along with lack of sleep and sadness, totally shut down the creative side of my brain. After some time to think about it, and in the last couple of days, I've had some difficult conversations to free up space and calm my mind. My creative mind opened up today, giving me much more clarity for the new ideas and confidence to take on the challenges of life. Here's one more checklist of when to say no. If you feel uncomfortable, so listen to your intuition. You feel guilty or obligated. When you're overloaded, check in with yourself from time to time. Am I overloaded? If your request crosses your personal boundaries. I mentioned something earlier in this conversation about knowing your values and your goals. If you're only saying yes to please someone else, hmm, how many times have we done that? Probably very often. I hope this talk has helped you understand that it's very important to say no. Important for your mental well-being. You can do less and deliver more. And it will increase your performance, prevent burnout, and give you the mind space to focus on what makes you happy. I hope this topic has helped you. I'll see you again in two weeks. And remember, it's never too late to reinvent yourself. Cheers.